हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग विक मार्टिंग वीडियो की हाल चाल आई होप यूर गुड अगेन वी विल ब्रिंग यू अप द नेक्स्ट टू प्रॉब्लम्स आल्सो सो नो वरीज होल्ड ऑन दिस प्रॉब्लम सेज मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ डिस्टिंक्ट एलिमेंट्स आफ्टर ऑपरेशंस सो यू आर गिवन एन टीचर आर ए नम्स एंड एन एन टीचर के एज यू कैन सी नम्स एंड के आर गिवन टू यू नाउ यू आर अलाउड टू परफॉर्म ऑपरेशन ऑन ईच एलिमेंट एट मोस्ट वंस विच मीन्स इधर अप्लाई द ऑपरेशन आई नॉट अप्लाई बट आई विल अप्लाई एट मैक्स वंस विच मीन्स एट दिस इंडेक्स just one time i can apply a operation what is operation like operation is that i can add an integer in the range minus k to k to any specific element i want for example for this element i can add any integer from minus 2 to 2 this is what i can add which ultimately means that if i have some specific nums of i i can add anything from minus k to k which means after After this modification or addition of any number between minus k to k, this nums of i will become anything from nums of i minus k to nums of i plus k. Which means that with this operation of modification, I can change my nums of i to anywhere between nums of i minus k to nums of i plus k. Okay, makes sense. Then you have to ultimately return the maximum possible number of distinct elements in nums. Which means you want to make sure that you are modifying each and every value in this, and also parallelly making sure that you are able to achieve as many distinct values as possible. Now, to visualize this fact, let's simply draw this thing. Okay, you have one, then like you have one, then you have two, then you have two, then you have three, then you have three, then you have four. Now, if Again, make sure that part that uh, for any number you have this option that he can become anything from minus nums of i minus k to nums of i plus k, which means that this number can become any anywhere from one minus two to one plus two, which means minus one two three. This can become this can become anywhere from zero to four. This can become anywhere from zero to four. This can become anywhere from one to five. This can become anywhere from one to five. This can become anywhere from two to six. Okay, that is perfect. But now, if you had to choose that, okay, which number to do what? It is very hard, right? Let's say if I go randomly on this number, if I ask him, what should I make him? What should I make him? Then I will always have a dilemma. Should I reduce him, make him a one or a two? Should I increase him, make him a four or a five? It's a all the dilemma because I have no fixed thing because maybe if I reduce it, I might achieve a higher number based on what all numbers I have forward or something of that sort. Okay, so that's a dilemma when I'm choosing a number in the extreme or I should say mid. But if I choose any number in the extreme end, which means either this or this, if I choose any of these numbers, then it is pretty obvious. What is the obvious thing that for this one you have to modify it again? For me, it's an option. I might choose to modify. I might not choose to modify because the operation is at most one. But let's say if I choose to modify, then I will ask you: Should I reduce it? Should I keep it same? Should I increase it? Now you might say, Arun, uh, let's forget for now that you were at one, and let's say you applied any operation out of these three. When you reach two, then you should have the liberty to reduce it, to stay same, or or to increase it. right which means that for a one if i tend or try to shift it as left as possible then two will have higher liberty of choosing any value in this range again my ultimate target maksad is to have as distinct values as possible so for this one if i try to make him minus 1 Then I will have a liberty for two to make him any values in the range of zero to four. But if I would have made this one as let's say one or maybe three or maybe two, then the liberty for two goes away. So we realized that again the same thing. You can maybe repeat it from the right to left also. That as you are moving, just maximize this, which means moving extreme values to or like more extreme. That is ultimately what I am trying to do here. So what I will do, okay, just trying to move this one to the super extreme. Which is minus one. Okay, now I know that ultimately I try to move to the very extreme. For two, I am looking for anything which is higher than minus one, and also should be in this range because obviously two can only come in this range. So I will try for any value which is higher than minus one. 
and also in this range which is zero okay zero should be the how i should move to because again it is going to the very extreme as much as possible and also making sure that it is higher one higher than the previous number because again i am going very very safely only going one higher then next time again you have an, an, another two you are demanding for one higher value than previous value which means you are demanding for one you have this range which means you can incorporate one so you will put a one okay then next time uh, this is done the next time you encountered another value okay you are demanding for two two can come okay obviously let's put up a two okay makes sense then next time again you demanded for a three you demanded for a three you can <coughs> sorry you can actually have a three yes okay uh have a three then okay you demand for a four next time okay can you have four yes you, you can have a four okay have a four and thus you can simply solve it now if i just quickly give you this example also it is pretty same now you might ask rn um you're demanding for a four and you are getting that four okay you are placing it but what if this value would have been a eight which means the range could have been six to ten you demanded for a four but you do you did not get a four because four is not in this range then okay no worries anything which is extreme lower bound which means extreme left of what i could reach from it i will put up here and then the next demand for me will be a value of seven that is ultimately what my aim is let's quickly show you this example also four 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 but before that did you realize one thing that it is always important to sort your input array why because you're iterating on from the values from left to right also making sure that minimum is always increasing as we move towards the right that is the reason i have to sort it also okay quickly let's uh, let's see this uh, the k value here is one so i have to choose for this the value will be three to five here also three to five here also three to five here also three to five obviously i will try to firstly place minimum okay three next demand is a four can i place a four yes i can place a four okay next demand is a five can i place a five yes i can place a five okay next demand is a six can i place six no i cannot place a six okay in that case i cannot place a six. Oh, sorry which means i have to place anything which will be obviously same as this one because obviously this value which i am demanding is not in this range okay maybe i, I would have like moved to the next number but i cannot put any distinct from this pair thus the answer itself will be three in this case let's say the quote is exactly very same that firstly i sort it because i told you that why we have to sort it then i have to get the distinct count i take the prefix maximum i told you right now right that uh, you have to make sure what is the corresponding prefix maximum you have maintained so far so i'll take the prefix maximum in the very beginning i'm comparing again i'm comparing that by say okay what is the corresponding prefix maximum i'm demanding right now and what range you have so this is what I'm demanding right now for them. Now, um, I will simply in the very beginning demand super minimum. This is my demand. This is my demand. Then I will go into all the numbers. I will say, okay, this is the current lower bound and upper bound of the current number, right? Then I will check if my, pref if my prefix maximum, which means if my previous maximum, which means my demand, if it is less than, my lo the, less than the lower bound, as you can see, if my demand, if, if you remembered here, the my demand was four, it is less than the lower bound, then the actual demand will now become obviously six or higher. So I will simply place current number and I will simply say, okay, my demand has now become this, that you should have, you should be simply higher than this value. So I will simply make my demand as the new lower bound. So my, my demand will now become six, which means any number in the next future should be higher than six. And also considering I have put up one value, which is distinct, I will simply increase my distinct count. But what if, what if your demand, if, you, if, if let's say I come back, what if my demand would have been seven, which means my demand lies in this range. My demand lies in this range. And my, again, this is the corresponding minimum demand I had. So I will have to put up a seven next demand will become obviously eight or higher but as i put up a seven this i'll say okay simply say okay my count increased so else if again this is not else this is else if which means my demand is now in the range of lower bound to upper bound in that case i will increase okay my demand should be increased 
next time by plus one and also making sure that okay, I increase the corresponding count. So this is the case when your range for any nums of i, your range was nums of i minus k, nums of i plus k. In this case, your demand was lesser than this thing. In this case, your demand is in between. If your demand is higher, so you will have to repeat or duplicate a number which is obviously not help you to increase the distinct count. That is the reason we have ignored it because we only want the count, not the actual distinct numbers. If you would have wanted to get the actual, actual distinct numbers, then one more else condition and simply put up any value here in this range from i nums of i minus k to nums of i plus k. And then ultimately just giving up the corresponding distinct count. Because you did a sorting, the time is O of n log n. Because you did a sorting, the space is a log of sort. What, what, what I mean by log of sort? Because you did a sorting. For C++ and Java, sorting takes log n space. For Python, it takes O of n space. So, based on the language, sorting space will change. Cool, I hope you guys got it. And again, uh, problem 3 and 4 are coming soon. Bye-bye. Make sure, if you like it, please like the smash button. Sorry, please smash the like button. Bye-bye.